Good morning once again and welcome to our nine o'clock service today. I decided to do the recording outside today because we do have a bit more freedom and uh, you may hear a few birds chirping in the background, don't worry about that. Uh, it's good to be with you and to pause, to remember and to worship our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And I've chosen the time, it's just after nine o'clock in the morning, so it actually does correspond to when we would be down at the church worshipping together. But of course we're in our own homes and uh, we're still able to do that by this other means, albeit uh, via the internet. Our Bible reading today is found in John chapter 16 and we'll be reading verses 22 to 24. So if you have your Bibles read in, or but we'll read these verses in a few minutes. It is the night before Jesus is crucified and he's, uh, he senses that his disciples are worried. And indeed they were. They were discussing among themselves what on earth he had just told them. He said that he was soon he was going away and they'd see him no more, but after a little while they would see him again. And they were confused by this. And Jesus goes on now to explain exactly what he meant in more detail. Uh, yes, indeed, the next day he would be crucified and they'd be devastated at the loss of their leader. But three days later, they would see him again on Easter Sunday in the evening and their, their grief would turn to joy. And in verse 21, Jesus compares the disciples' pain followed by their uh, joy with a woman giving birth to a child. Now, every mother knows exactly what Jesus is referring to there. So let's read these verses again, starting at verse 22. And Jesus says, So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Well then, what does Jesus mean when he tells his disciples, ask and you will receive? He'd already made similar comments to this in the other Gospels, in Matthew, Mark and Luke, and also in the previous chapter in the Gospel of John, in chapter 15 in verse 7, he had said, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. So is this an open-ended promise with no conditions attached? I mean, if I was to ask Jesus for a thousand dollars, would he be obliged to give it to me? Well, the answer is definitely not. And I'll give you now four reasons why I believe it is not. The first of these reasons uh, is that to suggest that God is uh, promised to give us whatever we ask is to make him like a genie. You know, that's let out of a bottle, ready to grant us a wish, whatever you ask, you know. But this is not the God that we have come to know and to worship. It is certainly not the God who has revealed himself to us through his word, the Bible, through creation itself, and supremely, of course, through his Son, the Lord Jesus. And the second reason is that the Greek word that's used for ask in verse 24 is of someone in a lesser position asking someone in a much greater position. It is not like we're asking a favour from a friend. We are not speaking to an equal here, but we are speaking to God. Now the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4 makes this clear. He says it is by prayer and petition with thanksgiving that we present our requests to God. And as we do, of course, the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard like a, a sentry duty a soldier, he will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Now this gives us an entirely different understanding or perspective of what it means to ask God for anything. We are to ask humbly and present our request to him. We don't demand anything from God. Now the third reason that I believe that Jesus, uh, when he said, ask and you will receive, is not referring to an open-ended promise, is found in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 7, and verse 7, where Jesus says, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, and knock and it will be opened to you. But he goes on to say that a caring father will only give his child good gifts, 
that will benefit his child. Well, then such is the relationship we have with our loving Heavenly Father. He knows what is best for each of us. So then, as we pray, if we pray and ask according to His will and not our own, He will give us what is best. Of course, it may not always be what we want, but it will be for our ultimate good. The Apostle Paul again confirms this in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that well-known verse where he says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And that's it really, isn't it? That's the key. It is according to his purpose, not our own. Jesus also says in Luke chapter 11 and verse 13, he says that if we know how to good, give good gifts to our children, how much more will our Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Well, we've been speaking a lot about the Holy Spirit in, we, in recent weeks, haven't we? So then as we pray, one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to help us understand God's will and what God calls good, and then to create in us that same hunger, that same longing for what is good rather than things which are either frivolous or selfish. Then the fourth reason I'd like to present is that we should note that our worship focus first today in John chapter 16 and verse 24 begins with Jesus saying, Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. In my name, he says. Now, that's important. Jesus would no longer, or sorry, the disciples would no longer be able to speak directly to Jesus or ask him anything when he had ascended back to heaven to be with his Father. So, as they prayed, they would be praying to God in the name of Jesus, that is, on the basis of his authority and according to God's will just as Jesus always did when he was here on earth. Remember his words in the Garden of Gethsemane? Nevertheless, he said, not my will, but thine be done. Just a final third of a thought in Psalm 37 and verse 4, we read, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The condition here is that our heart must be changed, so that God's desire becomes our desire. And when this happens, our prayer will be in accord with his perfect will, and he'll be pleased to give us what we ask in the name of Jesus. Remember to the last six words of verse 24 in John 16. Jesus said, ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Yes, indeed, our joy is complete in him our risen and returning Lord and Saviour. I trust these few thoughts uh, about this verse, which can be interpreted in all sorts of ways, but I trust these few thoughts will be helpful as once again we break bread together, remember and worship the one who loved me, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So until next week, take care, stay healthy and be encouraged. Goodbye.
morning. Today's communion focus comes from John chapter 16, verse 23 to 24. This records the Jesus' invitation for us to ask the Father. And this is in the context of the rich relationship with God that Jesus has brought about through his death and resurrection to all those who will follow him. In all healthy relationship, there must be boundaries. His purpose is to, his purpose is to guard what is good. Ian has given us a good exposition of John 16 and has given us very useful biblical boundaries in our practice of prayer. Well, the boundaries are meant to guard what is good and not to limit the goodwill of God, which is limitless, limitless to the extent of Him giving His Son for us. And the context of this asking is in my name, that is, in what Jesus has ushered in through His death and resurrection, a new state of affairs in our relationship with God. And here's what it says, Ask, and you will receive. It did not say, ask, and you may receive, or ask, or most likely you will receive, but you will receive. In the growth of all relationship, there must be the asking and the receiving. It is in this process of asking and receiving that our understanding, appreciation, trust, and love of each other grows. So as we relate to God, we are invited to ask, and the promise is that we will receive, not necessarily what we will ask for, as Yen has said, but definitely receiving within the boundaries that will guard what is good in the relationship and the limit of that asking is the goodwill of God towards us in Christ Jesus. The purpose is that the joy that we have in our relationship may grow to its fullness. You notice the end point is our relationship with God. They will ultimately give us the greatest joy. The asking and the receiving is the means of building and expressing that relationship. God is interested in the well-being and the happiness of His people and has invited you to ask of Him so that, you may, so that your joy can be complete. It cannot be made complete otherwise. So, experiment. Ask whatever your heart desires in the context of your relationship with God that Christ has ushered in by His death and resurrection and taste that the Lord is good. Taste of His amazing goodness and generosity towards us in Christ Jesus. I conclude by repeating Jesus' words to us. He said, Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be full. Amen.
good morning and welcome again to the communion focus part of our time this morning in the nine o'clock service. So what I want to do is just read the last part of verse 24 of John chapter 16. It talks about asking and we will receive and our joy will be complete. Well that's sort of that's that's a, a wonderful promise to each and every one of us that um uh, we will see our joy will be complete. So what we're seeing here is that um, what we need, the Lord will provide, and he won't provide it in a half measures. We know that the, to use the word, com, word complete means complete as far as the Lord Jesus goes. So it's it's a, it's a, certainly a, a source of encouragement knowing that um, whatever we ask for, whatever we petition the Lord for, he will provide an answer. And he will provide the joy, and we will find that uh, that joy will complete in our lives. And that, that's a wonderful thing. What a wonderful promise that is to each and every one of us to have, to know that uh, our joy in the Lord Jesus Christ will be complete in Him. So let's let's just now give thanks for the bread and the cup, and then we'll proceed from there. So let's give thanks. Heavenly Father, we pray and ask you this morning, Lord, as we again meet uh, one, we, as, as in groups in different areas and different houses and around the locations, around the different places. We, we're thankful, Lord, again this morning that we can come uh, to remember your death on the cross, that your body broken for each and every one of us, that you lay down that life, your life for each and every one of us that ultimately one day we'll stand in your presence and give you thanks and have joy in our hearts knowing that um, what you've done for us is is such a sacrifice for 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 each one of us we who are sinners um, have the chance to become saints in glory lord we we're thankful this morning that not only your body was broken but your blood was then poured out at calvary for each and every one of us uh, uh, out of love uh, out of uh, doing something for each and every one of us that we might one day uh, again rejoice in, our, in your presence and uh, we're not worthy to, to have this uh, uh, poured upon us Lord but you did that for us Lord and we, we are grateful that you did that for us Lord and that you came down to this earth and you lived among us and that you not only ministered to the disciples but then you'll say through your word and through the Holy Spirit then you continue to minister to each and every one of us Lord and we thankful Lord that we can one day stand in your presence and we can also at the same time stand in the Father's presence Lord we're thankful this morning that um, you have done this for us and it was done at Calvary for Lord we, we are thankful for these things Amen we then also read That um, he took the bread, we find this in Luke, and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, This is my body given to you, do this in remembrance of me. So let's take the bread now. And in the same way then, he took the cup and he's saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do that also as we take the cup and remember that sacrifice of the blood being poured out at Calvary for each and every one of us.
Good morning again and welcome again to our online service. And yes, we still have no public services at Canterbury Gardens Community Church, although life is a little bit freer than it has been. Interestingly, this time of restriction has made many in our community reflect on what is really important in our lives. And for many, that's been less about things and more about people, in particular families. Which is interesting when we think of our focus for today and consider the things we ask God for. I'm reminded of a verse that I read when I first became a Christian over 30 years ago, which is Matthew 6:33, which says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Which for me meant, get my priorities right and leave the rest in the hands of God. I have to admit, I don't always have my priorities right. But I can say God has always been faithful over those 30 years. I thank God and I shudder to think what my life would have been like without God. Please remember that if you have any prayer requests or needs, even though the church office is closed, you can still make contact. Phone numbers and emails can all be found at the website cgcc.org.au. Please continue to pray, especially for our elderly, as these times are difficult and stressful and can be even more lonely for some. Flo is going to lead us again in prayer. Thanks, Flo. Thanks, Colin. We have a few more updates this week. Emmanuel and Sue had a much better week and Sue's tests were much better than they expected, so that's a cause for praise. Glenda Watts also had much more positive results this week, so we will give thanks for that. Sue Graham continues with therapies and she is enjoying time with her lovely grandsons. She's grateful for the opportunity she has to speak into the lives of other women in her support group who have metastases from breast cancer as she shares her life, her faith and her hope with them. Pete has had some more difficult days but he's getting wonderful support from Bron and Fran has been able to give him some good strategies for coping with this current situation. James, as James does, he continues to put his trust in God despite the depression that he lives constantly with. And Florina's had some positive test results, but she asks for, the, for prayer for the stem cells to work more efficiently, that these results will improve more quickly. She asks us to pray for strength, for energy, for no more infections. For Don and Roma, who are both struggling with significant health issues at this time, and yet they too continue to praise God for his goodness to them over many years. And InfoLink, it's been a good update there. They've been able to source a community centre for homeless folk to now have showers in safety, and that's a real praise point. So there's lots to pray for again. But before I do, I want to quote a favourite poem of mine by Annie Johnson Flint and I hope that it encourages you as we pray together. He giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength when the labours increase. To added affliction he addeth his mercy. To multiplied trials he's multiplied peace. When we have exhausted our source of endurance, when our strength has failed ere the day is half done, when we have reached the end of our hoarded resources, our Father's full giving is only begun. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power no boundary known unto men. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we want to praise you that you promise to pour out your grace in our lives, no matter what our circumstances. 
And as we pray again this morning for those who are ill, whether it's physically or mentally, we know we can trust that you're walking this journey with them right now. There are many others not mentioned by name who are unwell or facing surgeries this week, Lord, and we do commit them to your care. Give your comfort, strength and healing wherever it is needed. We ask in your name and in your will. Help us as your people to rest in your promises and not in ourselves. Father, it is easy to be afraid when facing uncertainties in life, and we pray that we will turn to you even more at this time. Our loving Father, there is so much pain, loss and grief in our world. With the pandemic, cyclones in India and Bangladesh, stresses between nations, family breakdowns, homeless people, broken relationships, financial difficulties, job losses, business stresses, loss of hopes and dreams, and many other things that can cause such despair and feelings of hopelessness in our lives. And so, Holy Spirit, we come humbly before you on behalf of all those finding life tough. You alone know each of our hearts, and I pray that we will be able to take heart from the words of the poem, that out of your rich, infinite riches in Jesus, you give and give and give again. There's no ending to your grace, and though our finite minds have such trouble grasping what this truly means, Father, I pray that we who do what we do understand will be enough to encourage us to trust you. Father, I do pray that each one of us will know increasing joy in our lives as we walk with you. And Father, we continue to pray for Scott Morrison, Daniel Andrews, health leaders as they issue directions on how restrictions can start to ease for us all. And with the students, students returning to school, we would ask for your help for both teachers and children to be wise in the way they plan their days and to still take sensible measures to limit any risks to themselves or others. And Lord Jesus, for those still doing online school for longer, we ask for your patience and grace. We pray that families will work together to make sure that there's lots of fun and laughter in their homes. As for all of them, parents and children, their mental health is just as important as the physical. And as we pray for the young ones, we pray too for the elderly those at home or in nursing home care. Help us to be sensitive to their needs and offer what help and support we can. We thank you for our pastors and elders as they continue to serve the church in many ways every week, not just in the church services on Sunday, but even more importantly in what they're doing during the week. And so we ask a special blessing on them, Lord. So Holy Spirit, as we bring these requests, we are declaring our total dependence upon you and your boundless grace. We bring both our praise and our petitions in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.